Okay, continuing with chapter 13, we're going through the normal curve and talking about how to use that z-score table um, and the percentages in the bell curve. So, um, on number 68, almost done, the applications of that normal curve and z-score. So, we have three reading problems to finish this out. On number 68, it says a company has tested a new cellular battery. The mean number of hours that a newly charged battery remains charged is 50 hours with a standard deviation of two hours. Now you know how this goes if you have a cell phone, you know some cell phones the battery is great, will last forever, you may have the outlier that lasts extra long, past what the standard deviation of the mean is, uh, maybe two standard deviations. Or you may have the bad one of the bunch, the one that just won't stay charged, the outlier to the negative side. So that's kind of what this chart is about. Uh, figuring out your z-score, where do you fall in that average. Uh, okay, so, um, most batteries, though, the bulk of the batteries, you remember, fall in the middle of the curve and last real close to what the mean number is. So our question is, what percent of the batteries will remain charged less than 56 hours? So Z, you have to convert this to Z-score. This is the first time in our study guide we've had to do this. So the Z-score is not just given to us. We have to find it. So you do need to be familiar with this formula. Um, it's the piece of data minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So convert out raw data to the z-score. So our piece of data, we're talking about 56 hours. That's the number that we're asked to deal with. 56 hours minus the mean. Now that has to be given in the problem. Notice we don't have to do our own standard deviations or means. That's already given. So the, the mean was 50 divided by the standard deviation. Standard deviation is 2. So try to remember that. Your raw data, your, your number you're asked to find, the 56 hours of the question, minus the mean, divided by the standard deviation. That will tell you your number of z-scores. So that is 6 divided by 2, or 3. So that would be 3 standard deviations, and it's positive, so above the mean. Uh, if we were looking at that as a visual, remember in your bell curve or your normal curve, uh, the mean is at zero in the middle, so if we're at positive three, we're three standard deviations above the mean. And the question is, how many do you expect to stay charged uh, below 56 hours, which would be from there on to the end of the curve, to the left of the curve, which is exactly what's on your chart. The chart always states this chart that we're using. Now, there's different charts in different books you should be aware of. Some do not do the whole curve this way. But our chart is listed all the area from your z-score all the way to the very end to the left of that. So when we look at z is 3, and you would do that in your chart, you will find the number 0.9987. So almost 100%. That would be 99.87% from three standard deviations over. Uh, again, that would be most of the batteries. Now, you may have the super battery that lasts maybe uh, above that. So if the question would have been how many batteries last more than 56 hours, then you would have had just a small amount of uh, data there. So less than a percent would go above 56 hours. But that could be you. All right, so that's number 68. Number 69, a similar question. We're talking about the heights of female and females in a certain village. It says, assume that the heights of females in a certain village are normally distributed. That tells us that we can use this uh, chart, this method, that should follow along this normal curve. So, the heights of females normally distributed with a mean of 66, that number will be given to you, and a standard deviation of 6 inches. What percent of these females are between 48 inches and 60 inches tall? So though, these are considered our raw scores, our numbers that aren't converted into a z-score to use the table. So we have to do like we did on the last one and do our z-conversion. Z is the piece of data minus the mean, the mean was given, remember it's 66, divided by the standard deviation, also given as 6 inches. So we'll convert that, 48 minus 66, And then divide it, that's negative 18, divided by 6, so that's negative 3. So that's below the mean, right, if it's negative. So we get a z-score of negative 3. Um, and we've got two parts, 48 inches and 60 inches. So I need to do that again for 60. So the z-score will be 60 
minus the mean, 66, divided by the standard deviation. That is also going to be below the mean. 60 minus 66 is negative 6, divided by 6 is negative 1. So we've got two z-scores now. We'll be able to use our z-score table. But what helps me is if I'll draw a little visual of this to help me reason out what I'm going to do next. I always like to draw a little curve and say here's the middle at zero. So we have two z-scores. We have one at negative one, one place below the mean, and then at negative three, three places below the mean. And the question was, find the percent between those two amounts, the area in between. Now this is a little different than the last one. We're not going to go there all the way to the end, so the z-score table won't be just the end of the question. Uh, what I will do is I'll look up z is negative 1, and it will give me the percent that goes all the way to the end, and then I'll need to subtract off this part from negative 3 over. So I will have to look at both of those z-scores and then subtract. So look up z is negative 1, negative 1.0. Uh, the chart says that is 0.1574. Then look at z is negative 3. And the chart should say 0 0.0013. Remember, you get really close to the end and get three standard deviations over. Uh, my picture is not drawn to scale. I guess it would be even further to the little part of the end. Uh, so the area between those would be the subtraction of those two numbers from here all the way to the end, this is 0 0.1574, 15.74% of the data. Uh, so I don't want this part included. It's wide, right? It's not the part I'm looking for. So I need to subtract that piece off, which is 0.3 or negative 3 on over from the z-score table. So that area is said to be 0 0.0013. So we wind up subtracting off that little piece that I'm not including. So it's just a subtraction of those two numbers. So 0 0.156, did I subtract them? Oh, I think that was, um, I think I have the wrong number here. That's 0 0.1587, excuse me. I don't want you to get confused if you read this and look at your table. Uh, this number at negative 1 should have been 0.1587 and then subtracting that for a final answer of 0.1574. Now this question has a percent sign on it. It says, so what percent is that? As a percent, remember you have to go to right, and it says round to two decimal places. So that would be 15.2 decimal places, 74%. Okay, one more application, number 70. These are all similar ideas using the z-score table. Number 70 is the wear out mileage of a certain tire is normally distributed with a mean of 33,000 miles and a standard deviation of 2,200 miles. Our question then is if the manufacturer guarantees the tires to last at least 26,400 miles, that's our raw data, what percent of the tires will fail to live up to that guarantee? So I need to convert my raw data, 26,400, into a z-score, so I'm going to use the table. So remember, the formula is we subtract the mean from that, given in the problem is 33,000 miles, divided by the standard deviation, again given, that's 2,200. Okay, and that calculates out to be a negative 3, negative 3 standard deviation, so 3 below the mean. Again, it helps me to see uh, a visual of that, so I draw my curve. I always think, here's the middle. So where is negative 3? It's past, it's pretty far past. Again, that's kind of just something to look at there. You don't know exactly where to put that, but I know it's down there a bit below the mean. So at negative 3, um, the z-score table will tell me the percent that's over here. Remember the z-score table in our book or on our math Excel program is always telling us the percent that goes from there to the left. So that number is given in the back or on your chart as 0 0.0013. That means this little area would be 0.13%. Not even a percent of the data should fall down there. So let's see, what does the problem say? If the manufacturer guarantees the tires to last at least this 26,400 miles, that's where we're at, right here. They, they say the tires will last at least that long. 
what percent of the tires will fail to live up to the guarantee? So that's the part that will be even further below the mean, um, more standard deviations than the three. So that's the failing part. It is said how many tires will match up with that. That's all of this, like 99 point something percent should live up to the guarantee. But there's, there's always the outliers. So there's a small percentage, less than just 0.13 percent of the data that will not last at least 26,400 miles. This was asked in percent form. It says blank percent. So this is in decimal form when you read the Z table. So we do need to go to right. That's 0.13 in percent. Sorry. Okay, and so that concludes your study guide. I hope you'll go through all those problems, feel confident about each one of those, and you should do very well on your test. And I wish you the best of luck.